Let's do a comic call. You're watching Bub's Comics, Bub. All right. So here's the deal, folks. We're going to do a comic haul. I did uh, Whatnot. I checked out a, uh, a Whatnot stream for the first time. I've never done it before. Uh, it was comics. We're, we're picking up comics on Whatnot. I, I have to say, I resisted for a long time. So my buddy said, you got to get on there. Sometimes there's good deals. And I just felt like there's no way I'm going to get good deals, right? I just had that feeling. But then uh, some of my favorite uh, sellers that are at conventions, dealers, if you will, uh, they had some streams that they were kind of promoting at the last convention saying, hey, you know, check out our whatnot streams. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, man, I got to go to another place where they're going to be selling books. But some of these sellers, I've had some really good luck. Uh, getting affordable books that I'm very happy with. So I was like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. If it's a seller I already know, somebody I already buy from, they already have my shipping address, all kinds of good stuff, right? I'll, I'll go ahead and buy from them. So this one seller had uh, had a um, advertised stream. It was like a Saturday morning. And uh, my wife's making breakfast. I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh man, you know, I'm watching the stream real intently. And it starts, man. It kicks off. And they were putting up some great books and they started everything at a dollar. I'm like, oh man, if everything starts at a dollar, I'm all over it. And so I picked up <clears throat> basically until the stream started filling up with a ton of different uh, people. Like at first it was just like, I wanna say seven of us. And then after the first like 10 minutes, there was like 15 and then it started like doubling over itself and over itself. And then it got, it, it got up there. Uh, but in the meantime, I was able to pick up some great books at great prices. Not that I didn't pick up a few books after that at okay prices. <laughs> it just wasn't as, as good of books, uh, as I picked up in the beginning. So, uh, not deal wise. So without further ado, we're doing it old school style again. Let's make me small and get to the hall. Yo! All right. Yeah. Nobody needs to see me that big anyway. All right. So first off, they start off some golden age early on. Now, I didn't expect that. I thought for sure that they were gonna do just, uh, you know, modern, if you will, type books. Um, early on, you know, lower lower uh, valued books, but they hit me right up with some good books right away. And first off, I've got The Inside Truth About Crime with Real Clue Crime Stories. And I have no idea what number this is. <laughs> Boy, I'm falling apart on these things, but I can't, I almost can't read it. I think it says number 952. That doesn't sound right. So it says July 10th center. Look at this. Real clue crime stories. I haven't even put these in new bags and boards because I kind of wanted to show you how they showed up because I was really wondering about that. If they would come in like really crappy bags or crappy boards, but they, they came pretty good about like you would find them at a convention. So there you go. A little bit of writing on there. Uh, I don't know, Fink Hood or maybe? I don't know what that says. Uh, let's look at that. It says J, maybe it's J Hood, our good buddy. So these old uh, crime stories, these old Golden Age crime stories are great. Look, this guy, he's dropping a cigarette out of him, out of his mouth. He's so worried. Knock, knock. We assume the cops are on the other side. That guy's dressed like the Joker from Batman 89. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Uh, so this guy is like, he has opened up, he's cut a weld into this, uh, hollowed out, like gargoyle-esque giant statue, right? We assume is metal. And so he is blow torching through. And as we assume he's got a guy in there all tied up, he's probably going to cover him back up. So gruesome stuff from the golden age paid a buck for this one. Oh baby. Yeah. We're starting it out just right. And then now this is this is a uh, this is a book that I'm not actively collecting. Uh, oh, by the way, I wanted to show you that that is not. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, okay. So real clue is what I think the uh, the name of the book is, not crime stories, because there's another there's another uh, run that's called crime stories. Okay, so this next book is a book that I would not have picked up unless it was dirt cheap, and so it is Nyoka the Jungle Girl. Now, here's another Golden Age Beauty. Now, back in the day, 
these Nyoka books were a lot, most of them are this kind of photo cover, uh, this kind of arts, you know, colorized photo cover, but they're not all that way. Some of them are, uh, are drawn covers later on. I think the last few of the run are actually drawn and not photo, but I could not resist showing you this guy in the gorilla suit. <laughs> First of all, her outfit is atrocious. I'm not, I'm not throwing shade. Look, if this was the only outfit the lady could afford, you know, whatever. But I, that is freaking horrible. I mean, I give her, I give her some props for her headband matching her like lipstick color and the patches on her arms. But my God, she looks like a traffic cone. This is just terrible. She's got a little six shooter there and some very modern boots. I'd like to say, look at that. And it says, read the complete jungle cereal, the wild man of the jungles. And there's the wild man. Not what you expected. You probably thought it was going to be some guy with like a beer helmet on, uh, but not, no, not this guy. Oh my gosh. Picked this up for a buck. Couldn't, couldn't not pick it up. And I like the little kind of stamp that was on there. That 50, 50 or whatever that, like, I guess 50 cents. I don't know what that is, but that, I thought that was pretty cool. A uh, nice little faucet cover here. Uh, Nyoka, the jungle girl, number 68. Boy, she looks like a jungle girl. My, those look, that is one of the most unforgiving inseams I've ever seen. She's got two belts. It's just horrific. Uh, but for a buck, old Bubsy's going to bring that home just for the gorilla suit alone. I don't think I have another photo cover in my collection with a gorilla suit. So that right there takes some cake. All right, next up. Joe Palooka. We like us some Joe Palooka. Uh, in this issue, the fight, Joe Palooka, we're sure to lose. Oh, man. The old Ham Fisher Monthly here. Uh, so you guys know I like my Harvey comics. Uh, I don't pick up a lot of Joe Palookas, but again, for a buck, I think I paid like three bucks for this or something. Obviously in horrific condition, but you know, whatever. It's a Joe Palooka. I, these, these kinds of books, I'll read the interior more of like that Nyoka the jungle girl that's gonna be rough in there but actually the interior art's not bad but like a lot of these stories are, are not that great but these Joe Palookas are kind of fun and uh there's there's old Joe getting the old knockout so good stuff this is just uh fun fun old golden age fun all right so some of the books that I'll be showing today I already had uh, prior to the sale. But again, at these prices, I'm telling you, I couldn't pass them up. I just felt like they had to come home with me. And the shipping was amazing. I bought these books on Saturday. I received them on Monday. I'm not kidding. I bought them like the last book I bought was like at 11 a.m. I want to say on on Saturday morning. It had been going for a while. The auction had been going for a while. The last book I bought was 11 a.m. and I received the books on Monday. It blew my mind. I wasn't expecting them. Uh, I They may have sent me a tracking number sat later Saturday. I don't know. They live like a state away from me. So usually that at least takes two days. But So this next book is definitely one I have. This is the Marvel Knights limited series of Shanna the She-Devil number one with this amazing Frank Cho cover. Now you all know I'm digging some Frank Cho. So this one gets the old uh, thumbnail cheese. Look at that. I don't know that I'll make the thumbnail, but we'll take a look. Look at that. Shannon the She-Devil by Frank Cho. Oh man, that is so good. And if I'm not mistaken, he does the interior of this as well. This entire book is done by him. You want to take a look? Let's take a look. We'll take a quick look into the old Shanna the She-Devil, since I know I at least have one other copy of this, maybe more. But we'll take a quick look here. Shanna the She-Devil by Frank Cho. I'm pretty sure he does the interior as well. So let's take a look. Yeah, that looks like some good Cho art. So we are definitely digging. Look at that. That's a good one. We are definitely digging that. Nothing wrong with that either, but look at this. I mean, I, this is a good series. Now, Frank Cho... I will say, although he is one of my favorite artists, uh, cover artists, interior artists, his ballpoint pen work is amazing. I mean, look at that. I mean, look at that, folks. That's good stuff. Uh, I, his writing is not usually on par with his art, 
But that could be a function of only that his art is just so good. You know, sometimes it's very difficult to be a master at multiple things. And I feel like he is a master artist. He's not necessarily a master writer. So we'll see if we can get, oh, look at that. Oh, some gruesome dino action there. So Shanna the She-Devil, number one, uh, written, drawn, cover art, all by Frank Cho, uh, one of my favorite artists of all time. There you go. Next up, we have a book that I definitely already have. Again, here is Wolverine number five. Uh, nice old newsstand edition. Of course, I know that I have this book already because I have the entire run of Wolverine um, all the way up till his death. I have every issue of Wolverine from, uh, well, technically, I guess I have almost every appearance. Pretty close uh, all the way up to his death. So there you go. There's a, uh, there's some good old fashioned Wolverine number five in his, you know, kind of patch type outfit, which this isn't when he had patch, but he was doing like mercenary work on the Island. So good stuff. Switching gears to DC. We've got this, uh, Mr. Miracle cover here. Now this is one that I probably would not have bought. Uh, but I always kind of liked this one. Um, now when I do my, we got our 10th annual bondage showcase coming up, bondage comic cover showcase coming up. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, but this issue here has some great, uh, male bondage. So you don't see that too often and uh, just barreling down kind of Kirby. Look at the Kirby hands there. And to me, she almost looks kind of, uh, uh Wally Woodish, but there's a, it's, it's just a nice little mix of art. Very, very dynamic cover. Uh, Mr. Miracle number 13. And if you all didn't know what a sucker I am for perfectly centered DC 20 centers, now you know. But when I see a 20 center that is clean all the way across, and I challenge you all, go check out your DC 20. Pull your whole DC box. You can pull your Mr. Miracle. I don't care what you pull. When you pull them and you'll see that the 20, it'll be cut up here. It'll be cut off the edge. It'll just bleed over to the edge. I want to see that gray all around both circles. And when I see that, I'm probably going to buy that book, regardless of the title, almost regardless of the art. It's close. It still has to be a decent book. But man, when I see those perfectly placed 20 cent DC uh, logos, ah, oh, man, I, that's that that scratches that little uh, OCD itch I get every now and again. All right, here's the Jungle Book, Grim Fairy Tales, the Jungle Book number one. Uh, this is not one I would have normal normally picked up. You know, the Xenoscope stuff is not really in the vein of stuff that I collect, although it seems like it would be. Uh, but when I see a Xenoscope book, it, it's hit and miss for me, and I already know the interiors are usually pretty rough. The stories are pretty rough. They're basically just, you know, covers. But this is a pretty cool, I assume, a female, what's her name, Mowgli or something like that. So I think that's pretty cool. And I like the wolf. So I like the, the take on it. I like that they kind of adapted in a traditional story of the Grim Fairy Tale. So I enjoy that. Of course, the Jungle Book, I think that's uh, Rudyard Kipling, right? So I don't know about that Grim Fairy Tales, but still good. All right, next up we have ooh, another classic DC. So close. So when this book popped up, I I, I went after it. I, I probably overpaid for it. Uh, I didn't know that you could bet against yourself. <laughs> so be wary of that uh, if you're new to whatnot. That when it says bet now, or not bet, but uh, increase the bid now then I didn't know you could bid against yourself. So if you keep hitting that button, it'll keep, you'll think that you're need to hit the button in order to win, but just watch where it is. And if that's your bid, then you've got it. Here it is. Swamp thing. Number 10. And man, when I first saw it, I thought for sure the DC logos were lined up. You see that one is just barely all in, but this one, boom, cutting the line. The, the black line outline of that DC logo is not in. It is out, folks. Out of bounds. We've got an out of bounds book. Now, thankfully, this Rights and Beauty is also a upgrade from my previous copy. So this is going to be the keeper, even though that, oh, so close with that DC logo, just didn't make it in. 
but this one is also going to be a keeper and uh, one of the more gruesome covers that dc gets away with i feel on these swamp things look at that and look at this guy he's got a head coming out of his gut oh that's horrific bernie wrightson master of the macabre strikes again look at that swamp thing i tell you his first what is it 10 issues or so or maybe 13 issues of swamp thing are just a masterpiece all some of my favorite dc art definitely cover art and some really good writing it's just good stuff man this is this is what dc does best in my opinion is a is a blend of horror superhero blending the horror and superhero genres I think is what DC certainly for for the uh, Bronze Age uh, is it's just so good at just absolutely so good at uh, Marvel had their share of it too but DC DC Bronze Horror especially when it delved into superhero is just Chef's Kiss. All right, next up we got the Barbie Twins. Now don't don't get excited. Well, you can get excited. I guess they'd probably still like that. But the Barbie Twins, uh, this I didn't know that this book existed. So I already have an issue of Barbie Twins put out by Marvel. I did not know that anyone else put out a Barbie Twins book. This one's from Zen Comics Publishing. I had no idea. For those of you, we'll, we'll take a look at it because I'm, I'm real interested. So for those of you who don't know, um, the Barbie Twins were a set of twins. They were models. And uh, I think they might have been noon models. I can't, I can't quite recall, but they certainly were models. And they were twins and they were blonde haired and look at that. Isn't that good fun? That's pretty neat. I wonder who did the interior art on that. That's that looks really good. That's like some, you know, 90s goodness there. Let's see. Story by Steve Stern. Bill Moss. Okay. Well, there you go. So Bill Moss art. That's that's nothing to sneeze at. Good stuff. Some nice hard lines, black and white copy. Look at that. Isn't that cute? It's pretty good. Look, <laughs> look. I mean, just just the panel work on this is fantastic. And there are like a couple of spies. Oh, you got aliens. You got babes. You got aliens. You got superheroes. You got spy action. I don't know what more you want out of your Barbie Twins comic that this one ain't giving you. But you know, you might need to look somewhere else to get it because this one is doing everything it can to to stay in your PC. And I'm sorry. For however this left the hands of that eager young man that bought it, found its way into my collection, but I'm glad for it because this is right up my alley. Thank you to the Barbie twins for making that comic right there. I'm going to enjoy reading that alien tale in a minute. Oh no, here we go again. Some more DC 20 centers. And again, I'm a fool for those perfect lines. And check out this little suckered monster oh my gosh we got house of mystery number 223 look at that he's pitching that off pitching off the boat she's like oh my what's happening she's about to turn around and see this i guess sea monster judging by how far out into the pier they are look at this sea monster with his tentacles ablaze Oh my gosh, he's going to sucker the crap out of these kids with his one eye. Very focused individual right here. My goodness, look at that. Isn't that great? I'm really digging that. He's just thrusting out of the water. I mean, this kid, this kid must be the most brain dead kid you've ever seen. I mean, look at his eyes. The kid has no idea. It looks like Conan O'Brien. He's totally lost in playing with his little boat. Has no idea the peril that's about to befall him. Here comes another House of Secrets, number 124. There's another wide-eyed kid. This one's real sinister, man. This one's dark, I think. But, you know, that's how it goes. So a bit of a miswrap. Again, the DC centering is nowhere on this book. But this is what you come to expect on uh, DC um, uh, Bronze Age on these 20 centers. So you see that the starburst is cut off. So if I find a better copy, then that will be my new copy. But until then, look at this kid dancing with the devil. Oh, that's rough. And you can look at his hands. You can tell. 
And what's amazing is that the kid kind of just looks up and you can see he's completely taken with the devil. So he must have some sort of trickery going on where he's unable to know what's going on. And look at these kids are just horrified seeing this kid dancing with the devil. Look at that. Oh, that's, that's rough stuff. Real dark, sinister stuff there from DC. And on the lighter side of DC, this is funny because there's a little bit of uh, horror in this too um, for multiple reasons. One is... Of Adventure Comics uh, featuring Supergirl number 408. And you can see here that this is clearly a horror comic as well. That there, but the most horrific thing about this book is the art. Look at look at that outfit. That is horrible. Now, this time in uh this time in Supergirl's history, there's some decent outfits. This is not one of them. Look at that. Looks like a nice big heavy shoulder capped cape. The little belt, belt, that little mini dress with, I have to assume, red leggings. And the little like Robin shoes, kind of like, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, Peter Pan type shoes. Just horrible. I mean, that's just terrible. And her neck's all backwards. This is rough. We're just going to leave it there. Ugh, yeah, that's terrible. And then this was so bad, they didn't even finish putting in the background under the Supergirl logo. They like forgot the rest of the trade dress. So it's just terrible. Just a terrible, terrible comic. But it fits the horror theme for sure. <laughs> for DC, the 15 cents. So they hadn't even got their act together by then. But there you go. There's some more uh, early uh, DC action for you. And we'll switch to Marvel. Here's a modern book slipping in the row. I think I picked this one up for just a buck or two. And this is Avengers Mech Strike. And I just, you know, I like Transformers. I like robots. This is clearly a Transformer ripoff. But look there. You can see Black Panther as a mech. You got Hulkbuster as a mech. You have Hulk. War Machine, Captain America in the center, Spider-Man. Oh, that'd be Captain Marvel. Who's Thor? That's got to be Thor. I believe we've identified everybody on this cover. If you see somebody I misidentified, put it in the comments below and I'll be sure to delete it. All right. Avengers Mech Strike number one. And now we have a giant size man thing number three. You guys knew that I had to show you my giant size man thing on screen today. Here you go. A world he never made, which is similar to um, what's Howard the Duck, right? So a world stuck in a world he didn't create. Well, here's here's man thing in a world he never made. So we're all in worlds we didn't make or create. Look at this guy. He's reaching through the portal. But, I mean, we know what we're all here for. Holy moly, that's good stuff. So, now I think this might be Gil Kane. And I know some people don't care for Gil Kane art, but it doesn't bother me too bad. It seems like somebody was doing good work, at least on this part. I like it. It's good stuff. So, there you go. Giant Size Man Thing, number Trace. Good stuff. All right. Whoa, here's some modern stuff here. We have a nice McFarland, Ghost Rider, Spider-Man. I mean, if I see these for a buck or two, I, I pick them up. I mean, Ghost Rider is probably one of my favorite characters. I've, I've got most of his early appearances, including his first appearance and his number one. And I've got a couple of the others' uh, first appearances. I just, I think it's a cool concept. It definitely looks cool. And it tapped into an aesthetic. You know, I think that for me... A lot of people like uh, Silver Surfer, and I feel like back in the day when Silver Surfer first came out, he was tapping into that surfer culture, and that was huge at the time. I don't think that the surfer culture has lasted as being a cool thing, if you will, for that long, but motorcycles and fast machines will never go out of style. Even when people are all eco-conscious these days and, you know, you got your Teslas out there. If you talk to anybody that owns a Tesla, they'll tell you those things are like rocket ships. I mean, they're super fast. So as far as that goes, I think people still like 
gripping and ripping and going down the, the straightaway as fast as they can. And for that reason, I feel like Ghost Rider will never lose appeal. They may reshape them and change them here and there and get them into different iterations, but I think Ghost Rider will be around forever. This is good stuff. Spider-Man number seven featuring the Ghost Rider. All right. Now we got Wolverine number 75. You can tell I'm a huge Wolverine fan. Wolverine number 75. I don't remember if this is better or worse than my current copy, which is right over here. But um, I just love that hologram. It's it's so good. And all the ones on this Fatal Attractions, all the holograms throughout are fantastic. If you don't own this set, you owe it to yourself to, to collect it. Uh, these holograms are just absolutely fantastic. Look at that. And I'll say something controversial here in a minute, but I don't mind to do that, as you all know. Look at that. Isn't that just great? Oh, I love it. Uh, look at look at how the claw, the ting, 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 ting. Look at that. And, of course, this is the famous issue where Wolverine gets the adamantium stripped from his bones by Magneto. Just great stuff. And uh, so, the little controversy I'll say about this is that there is a supposed blue variant of this comic. So, people say that there's a blue variant. But let me show you something. What color does it look now? <laughs> so, is this a blue variant? I mean, it looks completely blued out. And there has even been, like, you can go online and you can see articles where they cite this and they'll say there's a blue variant out there. But if you were around as a kid, like I was, when this came out, you know that you and your buddies, we all bought copies of this book and we never saw a blue variant. But if you left it in the sun for any amount of time, if you take this book and you put it outside on a sunny day and you let it sit there, the hologram will cook. And it will lose, and the book won't. The book will, will, you know, it's not enough time to sun fade. You leave a book out for a day, it's not going to sun fade enough to notice. But the hologram will completely burn itself out, and it'll turn blue and solid. It'll look just like that. So there's a little tidbit. Uh, now, I know I piss off some people that own the blue variant, but I hate to tell you, all you have is a damaged copy of that book. And I don't care what anybody else says. I was there. We were there. Me and my friends were there. And we had friends who ruined their books by leaving them out in the sun. So there you go. That's all I got to say about that. And that's the last book. So thanks for watching the video. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, we can... Uh, how does that work? Oh, yeah. Let's make me big again. Whoa. Oh, that never gets old and yet never gets new either. And we're going to leave you with the Shanna the She-Devil. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. There you go. Here's a new thumbnail. Gotta love it. All right. Shanna the She-Devil. Remember to read a comic and don't apologize for the glare. Bye-bye. Now subscribe, you egg-sucking pieces of gutter trash. Now.